Then we have exercises for the joints, for the joints of the body, because there are also minor centers of energy flow in all of the joints, and they have to be freed up. So we're interested also in that, certain exercises for that. There are exercises for balancing on one leg, on the other leg, even on one hand, on two, the two hands together. There are exercises or positions for relaxation, lying on the back, sitting, lying on the stomach, and also positions for concentration. So we have these seven categories, and we will be interested in our daily program in incorporating uh, at least most of these categories in our daily practices. And each person will have to see whether he's going to be doing them standing or sitting or lying, for what period of time, which time of the day, as a preparation of his body. Uh, in proper energy flow. Now, we can also separate exercise into dynamic and static. Dynamic exercises are done in conjunction with the breathing. All upward movements and backward movements are accompanied by inhalation. Forward movements, there are a few exceptions to this in general, forward movements and downward movements are accompanied by exhalation because by closing the abdomen we are closing the lungs and it's very natural. There are some exceptions to that. And in general, the beginner does more dynamic exercises in order to create more suppleness and preparation of the body. And as he goes on, he practices more the static postures. In general, we do more dynamic exercises in the morning or when it's cold out in order to prepare the body for its movement throughout the day. And usually the static exercise we have more for the evening or when it's hotter. But all of these are subject to change and to uh, y your choice in life to see what helps you more uh, in your daily life. I would say that this process of exercising, breathing, and relaxation, or meditation, or prayer at the end is like driving a car. And first gear is the exercises, and second gear is the breathing. And third gear is the relaxation or the meditation or the prayer. And so if we try to go to third gear immediately, we will have perhaps some results, but they may not, it may not be so easy to relax or so easy to meditate if I haven't previously done some exercises or some breathing. One leads to the other. The breathing will be easier after the exercises. The meditation will be easier, easier after the breathing which does not mean that you couldn't just do a meditation by itself or breathing by itself. But in general, there is this flow, which is helpful. So details for this and the experience of these techniques, we will get into on the weekend. So concluding for today, uh, we are not helpless in the control and the creation of our bioenergy system. There are many things that we can do. We have been blessed with the knowledge of these techniques. And for me, it's a shame for someone to know that there are techniques which he can employ in his life, which can improve the quality of his life, because energy means quality, also in feelings, in loving, in creating, and working, whatever he does, and not to employ them. And it's really a shame. It's not very intelligent. I mean. I don't love myself if I'm not willing to give myself that very simple gift of a higher quality life through a higher quality of energy, which will eventually lead me to a higher quality of thinking, a more relaxed and clear mind, and eventually spiritual growth. Uh, so I encourage you to create a period of time in your daily program in which you will begin to employ these techniques 
in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Choose it yourself. Two times a day is even better. In which we do some exercises, some breathing techniques, and some form of letting go, whether that's called relaxation or prayer or meditation. It's up to you to choose that, and some combination of that. Any questions that you have about the, uh, the question of bioenergy and regulating this bioenergy in our lives? Tony. How does participating in sports can we balance and harmonious with the bioenergy? Mm -hmm. Because you said about static uh, movement exercises, mm -hmm. or movement is more dynamic. Mm -hmm. Where do you put sports? How can that fit in the harmony? Well, I think sports, which is a daily movement of the body, is beneficial. The, the only thing that one would have to, I mean, it, it helps the bioenergy to flow and it keeps the body healthy. One would just have to be careful about overdoing it, the, the effects of overdoing uh, some forms of, ex some, form, some movements which may create uh, inflammations or bruising in some parts of the body or overuse of of some cells which may create problems. I mean, otherwise, uh, as a way of life, participating in sports is also releasing emotionally, it's also satisfying, yeah. and it does all of that which we said earlier. When we just have to watch out for overdoing it. And if it's a competitive sport, uh, for the tension which might be created, the emotional tension which might create it in worrying about the result. Is there a point that uh, someone can see inside himself to see if it's too much or where does it go to mm -hmm. overdoing it? Well, inflammation is one sign. Uh, tiredness of the body is another sign. Uh, losing our love for that, we, that which we are doing is another sign that we just we wake up and not feel like doing it today. Bru uh, bruising of the body would be another sign. I remember when I first started yoga, and I had been playing a lot of basketball before that, and football, and uh, I found that it was conflicting in my muscles. But then as time went by and I was doing both, then there was no conflict. But in the beginning, uh, my muscles were confused whether they're going to stretch or, or uh, contract, what they're going to do. But I found that the body could accept both disciplines. But in the beginning, there was some conflict. 